<laughs> 30 years ago, a Yorkshire journalist unleashed a publishing phenomenon. Her name was Barbara Taylor Bradford, and her book, A Woman of Substance, became one of the top ten best-selling novels of all time. It certainly did, to mark the, would you believe it, I can't, 30th anniversary of the book, a nationwide hunt for a 21st century woman of substance was launched. And last night, Barbara was in London to see another Yorkshire journalist, Lisa Salmon from Leeds, win that title at a glittering star-studded ceremony. In a moment, we're going to be talking to the great lady herself, but first, our reporter Amanda Harper went to meet Lisa at her home in Horsforth. With a young family and a busy job, journalist Lisa Salmon certainly has her hands full. But eight years ago, Lisa was involved in a head-on crash which was to change her life forever. She suffered multiple injuries and lost most of her sight. I suppose when I was back to full consciousness, I was just grateful to be alive. But that was the, the overriding emotion that I was just glad that I was still here. And, and it's not that everything else didn't matter, but I just felt that how could I moan at all when I was still alive? It took 12 operations and months in hospital. Then, just over a year after the accident, Lisa became a mother for the first time. But baby Connor was just two days old when he tragically died. It was like a, a physical pain. It, it was just so awful. It's impossible to draw any positives out of, of Connor's death. Um, but the only thing I can say is that at least I was able to have more children and, and I went on to have Joel and Christian. And every day she values the support of husband Mark, who she met just three months before her accident. My mum said to him when I was in intensive care immediately after the accident that, that he wasn't expected to stay around. Nobody expected him to because he thought I was going to die and if not, God knows what state I'd be in. And he apparently said to her, well, uh, I didn't love her because she could see and I'm not going anywhere. And he's still here, amazingly. I've got a great husband and, and gorgeous kids, so it's not that bad really, is it? <laughs> She really wonderful is woman. a wonderful woman. Of woman. Substance. Mm. Those awards took the world by storm, but particularly this, this wonderful woman that we are celebrating here. She is truly a strong character, isn't she? Bob? She's fabulous. And we had a lot of entries. Fortunately, somebody else helped to sort them out, and we were left at the end with 30. And it's curious because at, in August, when we were going through the entries, we all, without saying anything, had focused in on Lisa mm. immediately. And it's strange because, of course, she was a journalist. A coincidence. Mm -hmm. As you, from that's Leeds, how you, you started know. off. Yes, and she was, she is almost blind, you know, mm. and she's so brave. Lovely lady. Uh, 25 novels, Barbara. How on earth do you do it? Well, I said, uh, you know, it was Hemingway who said, the only way you write a book is to sit your backside on a chair and start writing. <laughs> so that's how I do it. No, I do it because I want to and I love it. And it's like a new adventure when I start a new story with lots of characters that I like, love sometimes, and think are real. And I make them real, I guess, but I enjoy it, and that's why I do it. When I read a good book, and I come to the end, that very last page, I almost feel I've lost something. Do you feel you find something when you start with that first page and those characters start to develop? Yes, you have. It takes a while to get going, because you have to find the voice that you're going to use. It's really your own voice. It's got to be the style you're going to write the book in. but. Oddly enough, you feel you lose somebody when you finish a book. I do too. And when I finished A Woman of Substance all those years ago and wrote the end, I actually started to cry. Now, that might have been tiredness, but I know that as I thought at that moment, I've lost Emma. But I haven't lost her. No, she's because in my heart. And you know. 30 years on, Barbara, she's still going strong. She's still, still selling. Still selling. This is the extraordinary thing. And congratulations on your long career. And Thank you. Uh, well we love it when you come back to see us. Come Thank back you. again, won't you? I will. Thank you. Pleasure. Right, let's turn to another bit of fiction now, the weather. <laughs> <laughs> the forecast, as is always the case, um, is uh, fictional at times anyway. The Penison Show is uh, on us tomorrow. Let me just show you some pictures. They've been working hard uh, during the last 24 hours. It's been absolutely glorious across uh, so South Yorkshire. They've been working really hard up there, but it's been uh, beautiful the last few days. The ground is firm and they're all looking forward to a wonderful day. Let's have a look at that forecast for the 136th 
Penniston show and it really couldn't be better. Glorious up there in the South Yorkshire Pennines. 20 degrees, just a light northwesterly wind. Uh, enjoy it if you're heading up there wherever you are. Some just fantastic uh, September weather to come. A little bit of patchy fog in places, then it's warm and sunny, all courtesy of that area of uh, high pressure. Now the satellite picture shows we've hardly had a cloud in the sky. Having said that, just like yesterday evening, we're beginning to see medium and high level cloud filter down from the north. So that will continue, I think, over the next few hours. Eventually it will clear away southward, skies will clear, and it is going to be chilly. We'll have that mist and patchy fog across low lying parts and temperatures down to around about 5 or 6 degrees. So an autumnal chill in the air by dawn 5.41 Fahrenheit. The sun rises then in the morning morning at uh, 6.35 setting at 7.29 your high water times in Scarborough just short at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So it may be grey first thing in the morning, mist, patchy fog, a bit of low cloud, but it's not going to last long. Um, really sunshine breaking through those uh, uh, low clouds and then all of us enjoying unbroken sunshine as we head through the afternoon, perhaps just a little bit of fair weather cloud in places. Now subtly the winds will be a little bit different tomorrow along the coast, an onshore breeze, pegging temperatures back to 17, but inland a light northwesterly, 21 locally, 22 degrees in West and South Yorkshire, that's 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Bit of a different day on Sunday, generally dry, quite cloudy at times but with some sunshine. Early next week, predominantly dry but rather cloudy at times. That's the forecast. Thanks, Paul. Thank you very much. And I see on your new book, Breaking the Rules, you can win an afternoon tea with you in New York. Well, yes, if you win the prize. <laughs> you've got to buy the book to win the prize, probably. <laughs> oh, I'm great. signing tomorrow at Harvey Nicks. Oh, in, that's in a good Yes. Good luck. See you Good later. night. <laughs>